Well, hi there, friends. Welcome to another event from Nonprofit Tech Club Austin. Um, it's affiliated with N10. We've got our friend Tristan here um, and TechSoup, who I'm representing briefly today. Um, so I'm Eli. I'm a TechSoup community manager. Um, and this chapter, Nonprofit Tech Club Austin, is affiliated with TechSoup Connect, which is a global network of tech for good meetups. And it's all sort of under the umbrella of TechSoup, which is a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits get, implement, and use technology effectively. So like any community, we've got some ground rules. We've got some, some guidelines. So our first here is that we welcome everyone. The second is that we put community first because we're all here to support each other. Our third is that we're here to build stronger nonprofits. So we're gonna talk a lot about technology today. It's like the lens that we use for looking at the topic, but ultimately we're a, a community of nonprofits who are here to support each other. Fourth, we invite participation. We think that everyone has something to learn and contribute, but that also of course leads into number five. We treat each other with kindness and respect. <laughs> and that means there is an open chat window here, but before you go too wild in that chat window, just take a moment to ask yourself if you're bringing your kindest and most empathetic self. And if you think you can pass that base test, then go for it. But just, just take a moment before you do anything and, uh, and make sure you're bringing your best self to the table. We, of course, need your help. Carolyn and Carl and Dale and the whole team have put together a really amazing lineup of events through the rest of the year, but they need more ideas. They need more event producers. They need more people working on the marketing team. They need note takers. If you are interested in getting involved, one, it's super fun, two, It'll be easy. So uh, reach out in the chat or ping Carolyn and she'd be happy to help you out. So let me tell you a little bit about TechSoup. As I said, a nonprofit that helps other nonprofits with hardware, software, technology, all that fun stuff. And the way that happens is we partnered with about 120 of the largest technology companies, the Boxes, the Zooms, the Cisco's, the Dell's, the Zoom, the product we're in right now, to help them expand their discounted and donation program to nonprofits globally. And just to give you a sense practically of what that could mean, I've mocked up a 10 person nonprofit and given you a good sense of the kinds of savings that come through that TechSoup account, which is by the way, totally free. So uh, get on it. <laughs> and of course, sometimes you're not gonna get the answers you need in this event itself. I know, shocking, but sometimes it'll happen. TechSoup has got some good forums, as of course does our friends over at N10. And finally, more events just like this one are happening over at events.techsoup.org, where you're gonna see both the TechSoup webinars as well as the events from all the other chapters across the globe doing amazing events. So you can see events from the groups in Nairobi or events from the groups in Romania or the events from the groups in the UK. So go check it out. And here's just a sampling of the upcoming events that the team has put together. Um, but again, you should just go and register for all of them because they're going to be fabulous. And with that, I am going to get out of the way and it's over to Carolyn. All right, now let me share my screen. Thanks everyone for coming. We appreciate you very much. Okay, here we go. I have just a few slides before I hand the program off to Tristan Penn, our guest. There we go. Nonprofit Tech Club Austin. I made this uh, little logo for this year using Adobe Spark. And the only way I learned how to do that was our Adobe Spark program. <laughs> so on I've learned a lot from TechSoup programs myself, not only coordinating. So. Uh, there we are, and I'll share some links here uh, soon so you can follow up. And these will all be, appear on the recording of the program that Eli will post eventually this week. But we are, that's our hashtag. We are a part of a network of tech clubs across the nation and the world. We are a partner with N10, was our founding sponsor, and TechSoup 
uh, Global and TechSoup Connect is the new name we have uh, through our partnership with TechSoup. So programs are free to all and we have lots of great volunteers to help us make decisions on that. Um, again, all volunteer, programs free, anyone can come anytime and we post the recordings on Facebook and elsewhere so you can access them 24 seven later if you don't have time to attend the actual program. And our mission is uh, simply to help individuals and nonprofits seeking cost effective techniques and solutions to make their work easier and more effective. That's that. And uh, I wanted to say hooray to the home team. Thanks everybody who helped us with programs. We're all full on our schedule for 2021 and here they are. You can find us online and RSVP for any of these. And we're starting now to look to 2022. So if you have some ideas or need help with a certain topic, uh, please reach out and let me know anytime. Uh, we are, again, all volunteer. Our expert guest speakers uh, speak for free. And we urge you to support them always. We really appreciate their taking the time. And our volunteers include, and here's our LinkedIn links. You can find us on LinkedIn anytime. I am so grateful. It used to be Dale and me <laughs> by ourselves. And we have some great help now, thank God. <laughs> so there they are. And we'd also like to thank our local sponsor, Capital Factory, which has been invaluable uh, in helping us with venues when we met in person, but also they promote us on their Capital Factory event calendar. And I talk to them fairly regularly. They've been sending uh, Capital Factory swag bags to our guest speakers as a little uh, extra treat. We love that about them. And here are those links. Again, later on, you can follow up with all of this. And if you need help, just reach out anytime. So there we go. Now, I guess I stop my share and turn it over. Now, I've been a... Um, member of N10 for about 10 years, and I actually found it to be so useful that I, it is my primary professional organization affiliation today. And um, so I was really excited to have Tristan join us from Portland, Oregon, to give us an update because actually we have our tech club, of course, but there's like a whole nother level of activity going on with Austin with our Google Digital Inclusion Fellowship, which is an annual program. And uh, so there's a lot of digital inclusion work going on and there's a lot, the NTC and other stuff. And I was like, you know, I don't even know what's going on with my own organization. I do try and get on the conversation platform at N10 and share ideas, but basically there's just so much going on. We've been through so many uh, big changes and I only see N10 getting more influential and necessary <laughs> to say the least. So I give it to Tristan to uh, self introduce and share the latest and greatest. Sure. Thanks very awesome. much for coming. Yeah, thank you all so much for having me. Um, I appreciate the, um, <laughs> the glowing endorsement of N10, um, Carolyn. Uh, <laughs> really, um, you know, I think that kind of like ties into just the work of N10 and, and it being a community driven organization that thrives not only on like new voices, but voices that have been there for um, mm -hmm. a period of time too. Like we want everyone there because all of those are lived experiences. Um, and certainly we need them now more than ever. So, um, so yeah, so thanks so much. Um, just a brief, um, I'll try and keep it brief. Um, quick intro on myself is uh, my name is Tristan Penn. I use he, him pronouns. I um, am the community engagement and equity manager for N10. Um, and I, like, um, like Carolyn was saying, I am here in beautiful Portland. We just got off a week of really for Portland hot weather, um, but I'm from the Midwest. So 
if it's not June and it's not 100 degrees, I don't want it. And I want to feel the summer. <laughs> um, so it's been a little lackluster for me, but everyone else in Portland is like, whoa, this heat wave. Um, so uh, so that's where I'm calling from. And um, that is also Clackamas and um, Multnomah land. So um, I want to uh, just like open up. And I know Dale asked, um, in addition to my intro to talk about how I came to be <laughs> at N10 and just a brief backstory on um, how I found my way to N10. And it's a, it's, I won't say everyone's, everyone's story is unique, but, um, you know, I, I feel like it was just a huge leap for me at the time. Um, I had been working in after school programming. I graduated college. Um, from the University of Kansas. I'm born and raised from Kansas, central Kansas, and I went to KU. And uh, all through college, I worked uh, as a part-time um, after-school group leader for um, Boys and Girls Club there. And so then I was, I got on full-time with them at, right after the, um, I think everyone was familiar with, you know, the events of 2009 and 2008. And um, I was lucky enough to keep my job <laughs> in those times. Um, you know, that was uh, a very dicey time because I didn't know day to day, you know, just given the grant landscape, uh, a lot of the work that we did at Boys, Boys and Girls Club was federally funded grants. So we were at risk of a lot of them getting taken away um, in the middle of the entire situation. So, um, so I worked with Boys and Girls Club and I was lucky enough to work through that and to continue to be employed with them. And I moved up through the organization and worked for them for about um, seven to eight years. And then I um, uh, was offered a job with uh, the Boys and Girls Club in uh, Boys and Girls Club in Eastern Washington in the Tri-Cities. And so I lived there for a year and worked for um, that club. Decided that that area uh, was not my uh, cup of tea. And so I decided to keep on going west. And I um, moved from Eastern Washington to Portland um, and worked for the Boys and Girls Club here for um, about three years. So a lot, the bulk of all of the nonprofit work and experience that I've had has been in um, after school programming and youth development, mm -hmm. um, whether it's direct service, whether it's the um, marketing communications piece, whether it's the uh, program management, the project management, the administration, the C-suite executive level, I've done it all. Um, and it's given me a really wide swath and experience of, um, you know, how after school programming and also just like how nonprofits work too. When you're working in, um, you know, nonprofit for this will be my 17th year um, of working in nonprofit. And I, um, you know, there are a lot of lessons that come along the way. And I think for me, the biggest lesson that I learned um, leaving Boys and Girls Club. Um, was really like a pain, I wouldn't say a painful decision, but it was a really, it was one of those things that it's, you know, in order to write a really good story, you have to kill your darlings. And um, <laughs> and I, I think that was the case with Boys and Girls Club and just um, after school programming in general was that I um, was getting incredibly burnt out, um, incredibly burnt out working 10 to 12 hour days and, um, you know, opening the club, closing the club, staying behind with staff and kids who needed rides home. And also in the middle, you know, doing all of the, the administrative pieces of that. And so, you know, after you do that for, you know, <laughs> a long time, years, um, it starts to weigh on you. And so I um, decided to, to move away from from direct service and Boys and Girls Club and Youth Development. Uh, and I was a little scared to make that jump and to see what else was out there. I knew I loved nonprofits and I knew I wanted to stay within the sector. I um, also knew that I wanted to stay in community-based programs, but youth development was something that was really, um, I loved, but I needed to bless it, bless and release it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, um, 
took a chance and um, applied for a nonprofit tech organization by the name of N10. And um, I am so grateful um, that I was given the opportunity by um, Amy and the team at N10 and continue to be grateful um, as it, I, I think it's really challenged me in a lot of ways. And I also think it's been something that I um, have really grown to love um, and to understand that um, nonprofits work in so many different ways and to be a part of N10 as a capacity building organization for the sector has been um, so rewarding. I thought the work and I, the work that I did when I was in youth development was absolutely rewarding um, for the communities that I served, but also um, now knowing being a part of N10, just like understanding the reach and the breadth of what we do and how we can um, support not only individual nonprofit professionals, but organizations and whole communities of nonprofit professionals has really been enlightening and, and very inspiring too. So um, that was something I hadn't been familiar with before is um, the capacity building piece of it. So you know that rising tides lift all ships um, has really rang true with N10. So, um, that's how I got here. And, you know, I, I think when I um, worked, uh, or when I first got on with, um, with N10, I was a little nervous. Um, a lot of the people that I worked with were all very just tech savvy. And I, you know, I, I think the, in the beginning, I was incredibly self-conscious about my my experience with technology and my connections with it. Um, but also like, you know, not only self-conscious, but also like, you know, there's a healthy amount of imposter syndrome that comes with that too. Everyone, everyone that I work with still is like, oh, we can do this. And, you know, oh, we use all these tools and use all of these applications and programs. And that's, and that's great. And I've learned a lot, but, um, you know, I, I feel like the first couple, you know, months as I got, up to date with them and, you know, uh, acclimated was um, like, are you, are you all sure you want me here? Like, I, I feel like, <laughs> you know, and so, um, but I think the one thing that's been really reassuring in the beginning was um, Amy being like, yes, you have what none of us have in spades. And so being able to um, do the community work and also more importantly, um, towards the end of my, my time with Boys and Girls Club, I started to really lean into and lead and steward a lot of the um, equity work, the diversity, equity and inclusion work mm -hmm. that we're doing at Boys and Girls Club. And so it was a really nice transition to be able to like take on that role as well with N10 and to not only I feel like I was able to gosh, how am I going to make technology and equity like come together, but realize that like, oh, wow, it's all, it's all one thing. It's all um, how we, um, how we look at things. And so, yeah, so that's my, my N10 story. That's how I came to be here. And now I've, I'm coming up on my third year, um, which is so wild to believe um, at N10. So I, um, it's been, this last year has been absolutely a, um, a wild time. And um, I think all of us would, you know, I hate to belabor the word, um, but it's definitely been unprecedented. <laughs> and it's definitely been um, enlightening. And I think that kind of ties into, you know, jumping from my story and the equity work that I've now um, started to take over in a more meaningful way at N10. Um, has been that this pandemic has really highlighted what we need in this sector and mm -hmm. or what has been already been voiced by a lot of the folks in our sector too. So, you know, parents, um, folks with disabilities, folks that, um, folks that are taking care of family and loved ones have been asking for these like work from home remote accommodations um, that have, you know, would have, would make their life and their work in the nonprofit sector so much easier. And, um, and I think one thing that the pandemic has highlighted is that 
Um, a lot of times before the pandemic happened, those folks that were making those asks of like, hey, we need some accommodations. We need to be able to like work from home and do those things and getting a hard no from the higher ups, the admin team, the, the, the C-suite of people. Wow. As soon as the pandemic happened, it was like, oh yeah, we can do that. Um, and so it's really, it's, it's one of those things where we, we didn't know the pandemic was happened, but we could have predicted and planned for these things as a sector. And when I say we, I mean those folks in leadership in any sort of nonprofit um, could have, could have um, seen what was going to happen and come. Now, I'm glad that folks were able to, if they're working you know, in, a, in an organization if they were, um, they were given the opportunity to work from home, but that hasn't been the case for a lot of, um, for a lot of, uh, you know, folks in nonprofits. So I, I think um, that this, la you know, the last year with the pandemic has been absolutely um, enlightening for a lot of us. And I really hope that this is a tipping point for all of us in the sector, not only the nonprofit spec sector, but more specifically the technology nonprofit sector to be able to, um, I don't wanna say hold the line because I feel like that implies that we're like in some sort of battle, but I think there is a push and pull of like, I want folks to hold the line and say, this is what my standard of work is now. And I want to advocate. And now that I've done it and advocated for myself and my um, accessibility and my needs at home and my, um, and the, and the, um, you know, the accommodations that have been made in order for me to, um, work from home. I hope that that continues and that snowballs moving forward, pandemic or not. Um, and so, uh, that's, that's the other piece. That's the pandemic. And I want to hold space for that too, because in addition to, you know, the pandemic, I, you so much has happened in the world in, in the last year outside of the pandemic. Um, I know the majority of the folks that are calling in or listening are, you know, based in Texas um, and in Austin, but I, I, I want to hold space and see if I can make a connection in that, like, you all, um, I remember I, I was on a call with Carolyn in February and I was like, how are things going? Um, Y'all just like, finished up with a really wild winter storm like is everything okay and you know and I, I I empathized with that too because that is such a on top of just like the anxiety of having a pandemic and working from home having a natural disaster like that happen and just to turn your whole state your area your region your communities upside down at a time when nonprofits are needed most is just so stressful and the only, it's not a one-to-one -one connection, but the only other time where I, I feel like I empathized with that whole, with everything y'all were going through in Texas was in September in Portland and in Oregon, there was unprecedented wildfires that came through yeah. um, for about two to three weeks. The sky was red, like beat red. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever experienced. And so the air quality had maxed out at the highest it's ever been recorded. And so it doesn't go, the needle doesn't go any higher, but a lot of folks were saying, don't go outside because that, if the needle were able to go all the way, it would go all the way. And so, you know, coupled with a pandemic of, you know, not being afraid to air breathe the air around people. And now you're not even allowed to breathe the air outside because it's so abysmal, abysmally bad. It's just, um, I thought of that. I thought of that time too, because I think y'all in Texas, like just, it was like y'all were brought to your knees. And that's just, and I understood that at that time. I was gonna say, we had a program in April. It was totally, you know, we didn't even uh, know how timely it would be. Mm -hmm. But an El Paso um, entrepreneur developed a uh, volunteer by tax program. And so when the polar board hit and he was starting to expand in Austin but when the polar vortex yeah. hit that platform just took off like a rocket because oh, people were like texting I need this I need that okay sign up sign up and we'll get so and so to take that to you and pick this up and go over there so um yeah, that was health action with yeah. John Hernandez so he might be somebody you all would like to hear from during mm -hmm. the NTC next year in March yeah. 
I just yep. thought it was like totally right on the heels of that. It was like, whoa. <laughs> anyway, well, that, there you go. That's like the power of community too. When when things come together and like in the the worst of circumstances, but you know, that's the power of our community in that like we're able to mobilize in a way that's very quick and without a lot of bureaucracy um, mm -hmm. on it. And, you know, I think, I don't want to like, I'm impartial to Midwesterners and like, you know, that whole Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, I'm from there. And so it's like, I feel like there's always this idea of like, we just got to get it done. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I love that idea. Um, and I know that's like not specific to like the Midwest. And I know everyone has their pockets of folks who are like very industrious and very um, wanting to just get things done. Um, but uh, Texas is a definite get, get it done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you, know, and, you know, I can I can hold space and honor that too. Just being from Kansas, I have a lot of friends that I went to college with that are that were from Texas, and so, you know, I, I think that's just the power of community. And it's really um, during the pandemic we've had to lean really hard into those networks and into those communities, with the um, not even you know as an additional, but like communities and what they mean and look like and sound like and feel like through the lens of tech. You know, Eli kicked it up at the very beginning and said, we're looking at this through the lens of technology. And that's really, we've really had to force ourselves, you know, in a pandemic, in an ice storm, in a polar vortex, in a, in a wildfire, you know, state of emergency. <laughs> we've had to really lean on those techno technology pieces to form communities or to form um, community during those times. And that's tough too, because all of us are very stretched thin. And we all know how nonprofit works too, where it's like, you know, a trial by fire, like, you know, sink or swim type of thing. So um, <laughs> just wanting to hold space for all of those things um, that have just happened for people. And, you know, I think the other piece to providing equitable accommodations for folks um, in nonprofit or in, um, you know, in, in a pandemic is being able to say, look, <laughs> we're all incredibly stretched thin. Your lives are not 100% your job. And to be able to tell people, and I, I'm blessed to, to be able to work at N10 where they're like, shape your day however you need to shape your day because all of us are working in this collective global trauma. And so you're not gonna be able to have that like nine to five, if you do, Go with the go with God. Like I think that's wonderful that you have, um, you know, the ability to maintain. But a lot of us have been working in spurts. You know, oh well, I'll work in the morning from like seven to nine, and then I'll you know take a break and go on a walk and do some errands, and then come back on and do those things. So I think it's provided a lot of flexibility when leadership is able to do so for people and, or is not even willing to do it, but is like realizing that that is a priority as well in order to maintain um, equitable and healthy and mentally healthy um, workforces. So there's that. I know that's the big long spiel. <laughs> well, tell me, did we, have we gotten some uh, Google Digital Inclusion Fellowship applicants? Yeah. So that was my next. Thank you so much for the for the nudge and the segue. <laughs> um, so for next with that we have um, our. Di I'm looking up here too because I have two screens and I just have like the little brief one pager and I could. I'm happy to um, send this link and I'll put it in the chat for you all too, so it's okay. not lost. Um, but this is the. Uh, this is the uh, application page for our Digital Inclusion Fellowship. And um, we are actively looking for folks to join, um, to join our fellowship too. And I know Liana, who's like the program manager of that, has been working overtime trying to get the word out too. So if you all know anyone, or you would like to apply for it, by all means, please do apply, get it out, get the word out. Um, we'd love to have folks um, be a part of this fellowship. Um, and when is the deadline to apply? So the deadline to apply is, um, let's see here. I think it may have, we're coming up on it 
or it um, just got extended. I just came out of a meeting this afternoon. So okay. it has gotten extended too, because we really want to make sure that okay. there's a couple spots and slots that we need um, mm -hmm. filled. Um, so we are working overtime to get those filled and it's a really great opportunity and you get a lot of support in order to create and um, implement programming within your own work um, at any, you know, at the nonprofit that you work at to advance um, digital inclusion across the sector. And well, so we've had some great um, Austin fellowship yeah. folks uh, from Avance and Latinith. Mm -hmm. and others so Austin Public Library even so yeah. I'm hoping more people will apply from Austin and know that it's there so yeah well uh, after your talk I'll po post that link awesome cool thank so, you so yeah. much um so there's diff uh and um wanted to give a brief update and please if Put in the chat if y'all are listening or if you're like, you know, watching live stream <laughs> on YouTube or Facebook, um, please feel free to send out a message or um, post a question and Carolyn will get it to me or I'll look it up. Yeah, I'll email it to you cool. later, you know. Um, so. so NTC, so let's talk about NTC. I, um, this was our first year um, doing it virtually and, um, you know, not to, you know, look back in the past, but, you know, we were ready to roll at, you know, uh, March 9th. I had my bags packed. We were about to roll out a week later um, to Boston and not Boston, excuse me, Baltimore. And, um, and then we had to cancel three days later. And so that was like such a hard decision to go through. And I'd, I'd love to talk, um, not not now, but if you all want to talk about like really making tough decisions, right? Um, <laughs> with, during during a pandemic, um, or just making tough decisions that aren't uh, for some people aren't popular. For some people, it's like a given, and you know, and being able to balance the needs of the community, not only the needs of the community, but the safety and the health of the community. When we knew so little during you know about what this actually was 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 really hard and I think it um, impacted us in that moment so um, with that being said we were able to pivot really quickly because we're an organization that's focused on tech and so we were able to um, pivot and um, plan pretty quickly for the next year which would which was this year and we just finished it up in um, March and um, it was such a great opportunity. And I think all of us were kind of like holding our breath. We used a lot of, we contracted out with a, um, with a socio to, to put on, put on our, um, the conference through their platform and it worked really well. We did a lot of um, really cool fancy footwork with, um, with Zoom, which I was surprised that we were, we were going to include Zoom at all, but we were able to do a lot of fancy footwork with Zoom in creating some very community adjacent um, pop-ups, meetings, breakout rooms where folks got to float around in a way that felt organic or about as in-person as you can in Zoom. <laughs> um, so, so that was really great. Um, yeah. and, and I think the one thing was for me, as I, um, I'm shifting towards less of the community engagement role and taking on a lot more of the equity um, role at N10, mm -hmm. focusing on like racial equity and tech and how they intersect um, and how we can support folks, folks of color, black, indigenous and folks of color in the sector and bringing them, you know, the resources and supporting them however they need to. Um, so I think th because of that, we were able to create um, a racial affinity space, an online racial affinity space at our NTC. Great. Um, yeah, which was great too. And it was a continuation of what we had done in person. Um, and I was able to help out with that and create those things and to really um, start to see that community, folks of color within the community, um, really start to gather around and prioritize the things that they want, they need, and they need support in from folks that look like them. You know, uh, going forward after this call, Carl would be a great person to consult with on that. I believe he got involved with tech and learning it at Austin Freenet, and Austin Freenet has always been a big advocate for nice. digital inclusion and has organized uh, yeah. programming for that for a long time. Well, Carl, you and I are going to have to talk. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, right he really knows the, you know, what's going on in Austin. Yeah. Right on. So, so that's the, that's the brief, um, quick and dirty of how NTC went and, um, when, where are you going to meet next year? Next Well, March? we're still deciding that right now. And Austin. So, yeah, I, I, well, <laughs> Austin. I, I love Portland, but I'm like, I need to travel. I need to go somewhere. I need to like, you know, um, do some work elsewhere. And so I, um, I know Andrea is in talks with a lot of, um, because a lot of our contracts are still kind of like up in the air because of, you know, the pandemic that we don't know how long this is going to be. And so um, hopefully we have some information from her and Amy and the leadership team fairly soon to, to um, nail down where, what, you know, the deets. Um, so then we can all move forward and get yeah. back to the business of living. Um, <laughs> and yeah. so, yeah, so, so that's, that's what NTC is. I wish I could give more information about, you know. Oh, that's okay. Um, so there's that. And um, now look, I think a lot of people don't know that uh, you, they can get online and uh, sign up for courses on the N10 website and get yeah. certificates even. Mm -hmm. You can't ask for a better provider right? Uh, between TechSoup's courses and your courses. They're really cutting edge and straightforward. So I guess I wanted to put a word out. Here's something. This is like from the hacker mentality, which like I just hack everything <laughs> and never read the instructions, which is probably a mistake. But um, still, it, it's worked fairly well. <laughs> but here's my thing because I consult with a lot of nonprofits and mostly some of the smaller nonprofits past few years integration mm. I get in there and it's just a constant problem I mean maybe that's the sector needs to you know all the the, the public sector the companies but man is it that that topic I'm doing it and just on my own saying yeah. well that system that platform doesn't quite go that well with this but this one does and mm -hmm. oh it's like you know what i'm saying it's um uh, i i know it's um there's just a million different ways that nonprofits have patched together because oh, okay. oh i need this here i need sign up boom right. yeah. but they could have give pulse boom that would be really good right. so um well, and it's, it's one of those things too, and you bring up two really great points too. And I, um, you bring up two really great points and not that like N10 has the answer to everything. We don't. Yeah, we we're don't. a community-based organization and we're an iterative organization and we grow with the community as y'all grow, um, as we all grow. And so real quick, I put the, um, the education and courses uh, link in there for um, those of you all who want to, you know, explore that a bit more. Um, the other piece too is like, you know, the integration piece is, you know, that patchwork quilt of any nonprofit that's <laughs> like, oh, cool. Well, you know, we track volunteers here in this spreadsheet and then we, um, we also do this on this, you know, database and we got this database for free 10 years ago. And so we don't want to update. And, you know, I think there are so many things that um, are uh, new and shiny and also things that are offered for free to nonprofits that, of course, nonprofits will take because they're free. But, you know, I think as we go into, as we go into this new age of like being able to um, focus and prioritize equity, um, it's being able to just look at like funding and say, oh, this is great and it's free. I don't think it's going to serve us. And I know a lot of organizations aren't in that place to do so, but um, I think it's given folks cause to pause to at least say, how can we steward this in a way that makes sense, not only for us and our mission, but also for like, <laughs> being able to, 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 um, to make sure that you're getting the biggest um, impact or output of whatever is being given to you. And if it's not, and it doesn't serve you, then don't. And I, one thing that, um, that we do offer in addition to this, and I, I'll pull it up and, um, and I'll send the link as well, um, is and that leads right into we have an equity guide. I worked really hard. Oh, with, good. Yeah, with, yeah, we need that. Yeah, with Amy and um, the community and members of the community to put out a 21, 22 page equity guide. And it doesn't cover everything, but it talks about 
technology. You know, the equity guide, the um, equity guide for nonprofit technology, and it's free. Y'all can download it. Um, okay. And it uh, it creates. Where's the chat at? There we are. Um, it creates you know, just prompts and best practices and things for you all to chew on to think of and how you can implement it in your own work and in your own nonprofit, what it, regardless of role too. So it's, um, it talks about data usage, usage, it talks about funding and budgeting, staffing, professional development. Um, and it talks, it speaks to the equitable ways in which organizations can implement equity on top of nonprofit but also like, in addition to that, it can also, you know, do it as an organizational level, but also as an individual level too. And so um, it's, it's accessible for anyone and it's not exclusionary to any role that you're in. Anyone can do this because at the end of the day, regardless of your role in a nonprofit, we're all technologists. We're all here wanting to, to push forward our mission. And, you know, after this pandemic, when all of us are, Literally, Zoom will be a verb by the end of this year, if not already. <laughs> yeah. So we we need to really ensure that you know everyone in our um, in our organization is up to speed when it comes to equitable technology practices. Um, so there's that. There's our equity guide that we we put out. And please, if you all have questions about it, this is you know a conversation, and I'm happy to answer any other questions that linger even after this. Or for those of y'all who are watching as a replay, um, please feel free, Tristan at n10.org to reach out. Um, there are two, three other things that I want to get to really quick, and I know, um, please, um, you know. <laughs> play the music if you need to play me off like on the Oscars um, Carolyn, <laughs> because I am long-winded and I will go on and on and on um, that's okay but uh, we have uh, a tech tech accelerate too and so we, it's a tool that um, I'm throwing a lot of links at you all um, that's okay and I'll post them on our page cool. Um, Tech Accelerate, it's a free assessment tool for anyone in nonprofit, and it's, it's tool agnostic. So it really does tell you what, um, you know, it has um, areas that kind of uh, gauge where you're at in terms of uh, your organizational growth. And it talks about, uh, let's see here, I'm going to pull, I think I just sent the wrong page. That's okay. I can look it up and I'll find it for sure. I'm on N10 all the oh, time. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so it, I will post it for sure. On the, it on talks the about, it speaks to like the, your engagement practices. <laughs> what do you need to do based on the size of your organization? Organization, what do you need to do in order to like grow and really um, stay true to your mission and values? It talks about engagement. It talks about infrastructure. It talks about leadership and organization. Is this the right setup for you? And it's all free. So we just want folks to fill it out and figure it out and self-determine for their own whatever path they need to blaze or, or really work hard to get through. So um, Tech Accelerate is a great tool and opportunity that um, we all can use. And I know, Lord, gosh, I wish Tech Accelerate would have been around <laughs> or I would have been aware of N10 just in general when I was working for Boys and Girls Club, you know, 10 years ago, where I'm like, oh, this seems so obvious, but not everyone's, you know, <laughs> not everyone's on board with this decision. And, you know, and so <laughs> there's that. So we have Tech Accelerate. That's a really great tool for, for folks to use. Um, and then just a couple other things. And then I will, um, um, I will uh, wrap up. Um, we have... Um, which will be going live later this week. If you want to join a committee um, at N10, a community committee, we have, about, I think, about six committees that are getting rolled out and we're going to, we're streamlining all of our like community application pieces. Um, so it's not so like ad hoc and errant and infrequent. Um, and it follows just like where applications are open once a year and then we'll reopen them in a year. Um, so we have our accessibility committee, our DEI, um, our diversity, equity, and inclusion community committee, um, as well as our technology committee, our membership committee. Um, we've been tasked with being the steward of the Pizzagati Prize. So we're going to have a, um, 
uh, a, a community grant um, selection committee. Um, and I think that's, oh, and the session advisory committee, who could forget that for, for NTC? So if you all are interested in being a part of the creation process for next year's NTC, that's also the place to be. So um, that will be coming up soon. I can't send, to, send a link for that just yet, but um, it should be, keep an eye on the website this week. It should be up there. Um, and then um, the last but not least too, we're looking for um, a lead organizer to kind of help um, provide more focused and intentional help and support more so than I can do because I'm, I'm shifting to more of the equity work and Jude, our, our membership director is taking on more of the community engagement pieces. Um, so we're looking for some, some uh, lead organizers to be point people for not only the tech clubs, but also the online forum organizers too. So if you want to, um, or um, if, if you know people who would be good at those things and to provide those supports, um, that's a really great opportunity that comes with like a monthly stipend as well too. Um, and I can, I have that as well too. And that's the last thing I got too. There's a lot going on um, at, uh, at uh, let's see here. There's a lot going on at uh, N10 and, you know, yeah, I know. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, it's making my head spin, but it's all so, it's all so exciting and invigorating. And um, it's the passion of all the folks that I work with. Well, you know? I, I would say from um, the times I've been able to go to the NTC that um, it's such a welcoming commit group of people and people from all over the nation who attend and very friendly and not snobby and they they're not all know-it-alls you know yes. mm -hmm. they really kind of go oh what's your problem oh here here you go here's an idea right. and you get some super brainy uh presentations and all yeah. that but you could easily break those down when you just go talk to somebody and uh i recommend it highly because uh, so many times people get intimidated by those big conferences and oh, yeah. NTC is one word that you don't need to feel that <laughs> it's, and it's totally worth it like you're at at the end of it you're uplifted by it so oh, for sure <laughs> so that's really good but also to anybody watching this later leave uh comments in the uh beneath the posting on Facebook and I will translate those over, move them over to Tristan and just be sure and include your uh, email. That would be important. Oh, yeah. But otherwise, yeah, it really appreciate your taking the time yeah. very much. And um, let's hope for better times ahead. <laughs> but I'm oh, for gosh. more technology and I really like working from home, I have to admit. <laughs> I, it, it's been it's been an adjustment but now I'm like on board I'm like don't yeah, there's no I way to on that. I get so much done and then if I can go for a walk like it's right there I can go for a walk or go to the gym and then I'm like ready to work overtime I'm like I, I really get motivated but it yeah. it's reducing the strict structure of work and knowing people are watching you all the time mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. it's the so I hope more companies will let go. That's been a subject of several uh, news features uh, mm -hmm. recently. Like, how are we going to deal with it now that we're people want people are willing to quit in order to work from home? Yes, <laughs> now that the opportunity is there. We're not going to let it let it go. It's like, hey, you don't you're not going to let me work from home. I'm going somewhere else. Cool. Somebody who will. <laughs> anyway, well, I actually have believe it or not, a one campaign call. Uh, I'm a, a long time volunteer for the one campaign ending global poverty and encouraging the distribution of vaccines globally to every single human being. Oh, yes. So I must go. But thanks very much for taking the time, Tristan, and for all your great work. Tell everybody hello. We appreciate them long distance. We know we're kind of quiet, but we're posting and <laughs> <laughs> you know. I, will, I will pass on the message to you and you all reach out if you all need anything and I'm happy to to be of service in any way all right we'll be talking to you and I'll I'll put all those links up here shortly awesome Carl so nice to meet you oh likewise <laughs>
We'll see each see other. Us. Have, Have a good day. Well later. <laughs> Bye.